You know, is it just me? Or every time you've heard fake it till you make it, you've automatically thought of it as some sort of business strategy or way to climb the corporate ladder, right? Okay, good. Not alone here. Well, I was actually pleasantly surprised to recently realize that this may also translate to the realm of biology. Our biology. And possibly make us younger. Just another example of old adages at it again. Let's go. Yo, 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 what is up? Welcome back to another week of How to Health. My name is Kevin. I run liftandbalance.com where we take aim at all things health and longevity and do it in an odd, weird, interesting, and highly sarcastic way. Today, we are exploring some new research highlighting how fasting memetics, yeah, that's right, mimicking fasting, not only can improve metabolic health, especially for those who are battling the likes of metabolic syndrome, but also may be a means to turn back the biological age clock and make the average human younger at the cellular level. Now, you may be asking, and rightfully so, how do you mimic fasting? I mean, isn't it pretty binary, on or off? Well, it turns out that the biological pathways that respond to energy consumption may be a little more threshold dependent, meaning they don't get fully ramped up until a certain tipping point in consumption is reached. And if you stay strategically below that tipping point, you may be able to pull off a Harry Houdini-like biological feat, suppressing cellular growth signals and activating the longevity pathways of fasting. You know, all the ones we've talked about across the 60 plus videos on the Fasting 101 playlist, including stabilizing glucose, sensitizing insulin, activating sirtuins, stimulating autophagy, reawakening stem cells, lowering inflammation, changing gene expression, strengthening mitochondria, and improving metabolic flexibility, all while not even fasting. That being said, also eating a lot less than you normally would, thus giving this protocol the name Fasting Mimetic Diet, or FMD. Now, Technically, this is accomplished by consuming a low-calorie, low-protein meal once or twice a day, never exceeding over a few hundred calories, which, as alluded to before, inhibits key cellular growth pathways such as mTOR and instead activate many of the rest, rejuvenate, and repair pathways that upregulate the list of benefits we just touched on. The interesting part of a strategy like this, at least in my eyes, is the fact that it seems to be one of the ways to address the sustainability gap with fasting, especially anything over 24 hours, which has been documented as one of the key time thresholds when the body really starts upregulating some of these beneficial changes. And the way a FMD diet addresses this is simply allowing the individual to eat, making it a much more doable protocol than a multi-day fast. Because as we know, fasting is hard. It's a psychological juggernaut of a task for people to carry out for 16 hours, let alone a full day. And at the end of the metaphorical day, it doesn't matter what the benefits are if the individual can't carry out the protocol. So finding ways to make things easier can go a very, very long cellular and metabolic way. How long, you ask? Well, there have been several human FMD trials to date, and the results are pretty interesting, showing that three FMD cycles, which we'll talk about in a minute, reduced body weight, trunk and total body fat, blood pressure, fasting glucose, triglycerides, LDL cholesterol, C-reactive protein, which is a marker for inflammation, and lowered the growth signal IGF-1, all without causing serious adverse effects in healthy and metabolically unhealthy individuals. Setting the stage for the all-important question, can it make us younger or influence our biological age, as told by a number of critical biomarkers run through battle-tested mathematical equations and algorithms, a perfect time to see what this new study has to say. 
Researchers out of USC took a retrospective look at two clinical FMD trials to analyze the effects three FMD cycles had over three months on biological aging biomarkers and biological age. Here they looked at two randomized groups of healthy and metabolically unhealthy adults, placing half on an FMD diet for three months while the other half just ate normally. The FMD cycle consisted of five consecutive days each month eating a very low calorie, low protein diet to mimic the fasting state while eating normally with no restrictions for the rest of the 25 days until it was time for the next cycle to begin. So basically five days on, 25 days off, repeated for three months. Now, it's important to recall out that one of these studies consisted of participants that were generally healthy, while the other consisted of individuals who were battling one or more metabolic disorders. Blood samples were collected before, during, and after the three cycles, where researchers then assessed several biomarkers related to aging, metabolism, and disease risk. So, what'd they find? Well, interestingly enough, the FMD cycles led to significant reductions in liver fat content, pre-diabetes markers, insulin resistance, markers of inflammation, and immune system aging indicators, all of which are kind of important for metabolic health. Being associated with reduced risk of chronic diseases such as diabetes, cardiovascular disease, and cancer. Top longevity liabilities if you've watched any of our other videos, which also makes it not so surprising that this retrospective look displayed an average decrease in biological age for the FMD groups to the tune of 2.5 years when compared to the control groups. Pretty damn interesting. What makes it even more interesting, at least in my eyes, was the fact that we had samples from two distinct groups healthy individuals and metabolically unhealthy individuals. And the results were pretty consistent, showing that strategies like this may not just be leveraged as a therapy for the sick, but also as a prevention technique for the healthy, which is always the camp we want to put ourselves in because prevention is always easier than reversal. Now, this is also very preliminary data and more research and trials are needed to further reinforce it. But these initial results are pretty promising, displaying once again that strategic meal timing has some pretty powerful biological pull. So with that, how can this actually be applied out there in the wild? And is it actually worth it? This is the million dollar question. And it may not really be so much around if, it can work, but rather if it can be sustained. Because when push comes to shove in this 24 seven food at fingertip modern world, eating a tiny subset of what you're accustomed to for five days straight may be a tad bit challenging. So depending on where you're at with your health, and your experience in this realm of health interventions, it's often better. And you'll be setting yourself up for more success if you start slow rather than swing for the fences. And to be honest, a FMD protocol may not be the best strategy or even necessary for the broader population to reap some fasting benefits, as there are similarly beneficial strategies that come with a lot less baggage such as daily circadian time-restricted eating. However, if this is something that you'd like to try and you've discussed with your healthcare professional, there are a few companies that make it simple by providing guidance and meals for you to follow. One of the companies being Prolong FMD. You can also search FMD diets to find do-it-yourself meals on the web. But remember, and I'm gonna keep saying this, it is always better to ease into it. Start small with a single day and work your way up in a slow and controlled manner. That being said, a easier and potentially more impactful step may be implementing a solid and consistent daily time-restricted eating strategy or circadian time-restricted eating strategy, as I like to say. 
This simply consists of breaking your energy consumption into predefined feeding windows, ideally 10 hours or less during normal waking hours. This entrains the body to know and prepare for food at the same time each and every day, and in doing so optimizes its function during digestion while also upregulating restorative, regenerating, and protective pathways during sleep. And if you want more on this particular strategy, we do a full deep dive into the weeds in this video here. And as with any intervention, the best place to start is with baselining yourself, doing a little self-observation. Spend a week observing what your feeding windows currently look like, including when you typically start consuming any liquid or solid energy. Yes, milk and sugar in the coffee counts. And when you finish with that bedtime snack or drink. Research indicates that most people drastically underestimate how large their feeding window actually is. So do the little bit of work and identify yours. And while doing that, you might as well identify a goal window which you want to achieve to get to. This could be something like 9 a.m. to 7 p.m or whatever best fits your lifestyle variables. Like mentioned before, ideally aiming for 10 hours or less and finishing up about two hours before bedtime. With this information on paper, you can now begin to slowly adjust your current state window by 20 to 30 minutes every few weeks, shaving off a few minutes on each end until you reach your desired goal. This will help your body adjust with minimal friction and make it more sustainable along the way, while also preventing some of the downsides that are associated with longer fasts, including intolerable hunger and muscle protein breakdown. Remember, you're playing the long game, so take your time. I know everyone wants change overnight, but the real magic happens over many nights. That was a logic line. Great line though. And know that part of making it sustainable is allowing yourself some breathing room, some flexibility, some room for error, because we're human. And consistency will always be more important than perfection. Oh, and it's also important to know that no habit is a silver bullet. True long-term health and longevity comes from an overall shift in lifestyle habits, a shift which encompasses real whole food eating, high quality sleep, circadian alignment, daily movement, and nature. Rome wasn't built overnight, and neither is cellular and metabolic efficiency. Strategic meal timing is just an additional lifestyle tool in the longevity tool belt, something practical that can be done at minimal cost with quite a lot of potential. And whether it involves the art of memetics or not is up to you, because you are, in fact, the one and sole owner of your health. Mm-hmm. Let that sink in. Oh, and if you're gonna look up mind videos for research, be ready for a multi-hour vortex. Just saying. <laughs>